coffee. Coffee now! It's a purge that's frightening. But now we found that the generals in charge of our nuclear weapons were dumped and the secret transfer of weapons to South Carolina, and Lindsey Graham's weird warning of a nuclear attack on South Carolina if we did not act in Syria. What? What is this all about? Joining us now on the Savage Nation is Anthony Gucciardi, the founder of StoryLeak.com, which was one of the only places this story could be found. Anthony, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it, and you're doing a great job of exposing the things that the mainstream media will not dare to touch. Would you remind my listeners what you think is really happening here with these generals being fired? Well, first and foremost, we had super high-level military intelligence reveal to us, the confirmed source, that there was a nuclear weapons, a nuclear warheads transfer from Texas and Dias Air Force Base to South Carolina. And originally, I thought this was maybe not a big deal, but it was a confirmed source, so I, I kind of got concerned. And I decided to publish it online to just see what would maybe come from it. And then the following day after that, and that was concerning to me enough, but it wasn't a huge deal at the time because, you know, a nuclear transfer is big, but I didn't have anything to really prove it in the media. But then I found out a day later when CBS reported on it that Lindsey Graham had gone out on record in a speech and said just hours after we uh, released that intel that if we don't attack Syria, specifically even Iran, that a nuclear strike could happen in South Carolina, which is where that source told me the nuke was headed directly, specifically stated South Carolina. So I was concerned, and I called Graham's office, and I said, you know, did you really say that? And his staffer said, yes, Graham actually said there could be a nuclear strike in South Carolina if we don't attack Syria, and also we're really freaked out about it, and we're looking for answers. And that was strange enough. That got you know several hundred thousands of, of of readers to question what was going on, but then the real thing is weeks later after all of this, really what blew it up is the second highest nuke commander in the United States was suspended over some bogus lottery ticket, you know, gambling stuff, and it turned out that through a leaked email reported on by the Daily Mail that he had been suspended on September 3rd, the same exact day that I released that military intelligence. So specifically, it says an internal email obtained by the AP on Friday said the allegations against Kerry stem from an inspector general probe of his behavior while on an unspecified temporary duty assignment for the next guy who was fired, the top general. So both of these guys were fired around September 3rd, specifically the second commander, fired on the day of the nuclear intelligence leak, but then they were also fired for a specific temporary duty assignment that they failed to do. So all this coming together after we revealed, you know, that there was a nuclear uh, intel showing that there was a nuke transfer, all these red flags popping up, and Michael, I have to tell you, you were really the only one, the only major voice covering this and saying we want answers on this because this is a massive deal. This is very concerning. Have any of the stooges in the so-called mainstream media reported on this? Well, you know, believe it or not, the source that came to me, he actually told me. He told me straight up. He said, Anthony, you know, I like you guys. I, you know, I like everyone you're working with. I want to come to you. But first and foremost, I went to the local media near Dias, and they didn't want to hear about it. They did not want to hear about it. And even though this guy, and I can't reveal the source, super high-level military, was telling these individuals, hey, there's a nuke transfer going on. You need to report on this. Even the local media said no. And now the mainstream media won't cover this, but they'll cover you know, kittens in a tree getting rescued by fire people instead when there's a nuclear incident that all the red flags are, are proving it over and over again. So it's like there's actually no media coverage, and they denied the original source. That's why you know, programs like yours, what we're doing here, it's all this massive truth-telling operation, and the sources more and more, by the way, are leaving the mainstream media. They're leaving the Associated Press. They're leaving all of these lame, dying media corporations and coming to us because they know we'll actually ask the right questions, tell the real truth, and we're not afraid of it. So they were the, the source was denied by the mainstream media. That's how far gone the whole media system is right now. Is Obama purging the military of leaders, and why? Are there any updates? Yes, absolutely. Well, what's most concerning to me is that the source was very vocal about this. He was telling me updates about it, and then he went dark. Uh, there's been no correspondence with him at all anymore. Uh, we've talked to relatives and everything. They, they, they cannot get in contact with him. That scares me deeply. I don't know if they threatened him. I don't know what happened to him.
Okay, he's not speaking to us anymore. But now I hear that the major nuke uh, facility near Dias has been shut down for the government shutdown. They're laying out off like 4,000 people anyway, and that is the latest update. But what concerns me the most is all of these generals, not just generals, all these nuke commanders being fired and suspended, all by these higher-ups that are behind all of the nuclear weapons in the, in the whole United States. And then they're appointing this guy that's been with the Pentagon since 2009, and it looks as if he is the guy that's going to do whatever they say. My speculation, based on what the source is telling me and based on this information, is that these new commanders have been fired and suspended because they would not play ball. Whatever that means, I don't know. But they were not okay with an unsigned, off-the-record nuke transfer to South Carolina. And they were not okay with Lindsey Graham coming out and saying, hey, if we don't attack Syria, we could get nuked. They were not okay with this, so they got canned in a typical fashion. They were not going to play ball with these guys, so they, they needed to get rid of them. And unfortunately, it seems like my source, they might have, they might have found who it is, and they, they threatened him or something like that because he's not speaking out anymore. So there are red flags going on. As of right now, I'm sure more will come out, and that's why it's important to highlight this issue because if we highlight it now to millions of people listening right now, if we highlight this issue now in a week or so when another top new commander is fired or in two weeks or so when something else, a major red flag happens, we can say, hey, we were covering this. This is what's going on. And then it all paints a bigger picture, puts the puzzle pieces together of this entire thing. Look, we're not trying to start a conspiracy theory here, but what is the connection to Syria that the weird Lindsey Graham was implying? No, I know, and that's the key thing here is that we're not conspiracy theorists at all. I mean, we're just putting out information. I've never actually said what you know is going to happen. I'm just saying, hey, here's the information. Here's what it looks like through serious analysis of the entire scenario. My thing is that it looks like there are definitely warring factions inside the military. There are good military generals, good military commanders, and they don't want anything to do with these unsigned nukes. I do not even know what is going on. I do not know. I would love to hear what you think, Michael, what's really going on with your key analysis on this as a, as a guy who's been following this and, re and really revealing it to the whole world. But I think there are factions inside the military that are at war with other factions in the military. And this nuke could be used as a, a sort of a, a holding this country captive, holding it hostage to launch a war with Syria, to say, to come out and say, you know, so maybe one faction comes out and says, yeah, you know, if we don't go to war with Syria or Iran or whatever, then this nuke could explode in South Carolina. It's, it's a very twisted, strange system that, you know, it's, the analysis is not fully there. But something is going on, and that's why we're bringing all this to attention. We're not starting conspiracy theories. We're showing fact. We're showing reality from these high-level military guys and all of the mainstream media confirming this over and over and over and over again. That's what we're doing. And we can talk about analysis of, you know, looks like there could be factions holding this against us, looks like, you know, they could say something like it was Syria if in the event a nuclear catastrophe did happen. I don't know. But I do know there are control freaks in the government, as, as you know, as you pointed out. There are crazy psychopathic control freaks in this government who will do anything to get what they want. Anthony, where do you think it will go from here? Well, I think the key thing here is that by just speaking about this, we might be holding them accountable. We might be stopping something. We might be able to actually get more answers if we keep pushing this as an issue because what's happening now is the mainstream media trust. The mainstream is so dead now. The trust factors are so low, according to Gallup polls and numerous other polls, that by us forcing this into the media, they might be forced to cover it. They might be able to you know, have to be forced to say Michael Savage covered this on the show today and it might turn into a major issue and then we could get further answers. But as of right now, I think we're actually shielding this nation by just exposing this information because I don't know what the plan was, but the plan might be defunct now that we've been covering it because we've been hitting this issue so hard. They might not even be able to do what they wanted to do. And I think really on such a major scale like this, we are defeating them just by speaking about it and spreading the word. Where can we read more of your work? My website is storyleak.com, and I do a media analysis. I do political analysis, and overall, I try and forward the message and help you know, expose what's going on and also spotlight great people like yourself, Michael, and your show, reaching millions, spreading the word. And I think ultimately we can get the word out to the point where we make a major difference with this. Anthony Gucciardi, thanks again for being with us on The Savage Nation. Coffee.